All right, guys, as promised, fat boy's getting some love. And this time I mean the bike. So just waiting on delivery, but it should be here within the next half hour, 45 minutes. But we're getting rid of these. They come in about seven, three quarter, eight inch rise. And if you remember a few videos back on the street glide, we did these micro mini baby apes. Fat boy is getting some big boy apes. We're talking inch and a half by 16 inch Dominator Industry meat hooks. We're also doing new grips. We're doing new clamshells. We're doing new switches. We're doing, uh, we gotta do, uh, <clears throat> new clutch cable, hydraulic line, since we do have the cable clutch here and a hydraulic. Uh, break there so got one of the cables I think we got the clutch cable in still waiting on the hydraulic when I get to that point I tell you where I ordered from die hell so both cables came from Hill Country Customs bars obviously came from Dominator the grips the clamshells and the switches all came from Harley I don't think I'm missing anything else, uh, but just kind of go over some of the tools that we've got set up so far. I'm sure there's going to be more than I need. I just haven't found them yet. But for starters, we're going to kick off with a T25 Torx, T27 Torx. I always like to have an extension on hand, whether or not I need it. A 916 deep socket a 5 16 allen and a 3 8 inch drive ratchet got a rag to catch any uh, fuel spillage which we'll likely have when we have to pull so we get in there our fuel release that's real simple we'll go over that and got a couple of microfibers because we're going to be wrapping the controls as we hang them down so that way i don't screw anything up Ding, anything doesn't need to be dinged. I'm gonna take the tank off, set it aside over here, nice little safe space, because apparently the fat boy needs a safe space. No, it's just better safe than sorry. Get the tank clear out of the way. May or may not have damaged a buddy's tank because we stood it up on end, and my fat ass squatted down in front of it, tipped it over, and now I feel like an absolute heel, and we're trying to figure out how we're gonna fix that. I, how I'm gonna fix that, mind you. Uh, mostly I'm just footing the bill. So. Shit happens, he was cool about it, but I still felt like a royal ass. More so than usual. So, we're gonna start by getting this seat off. Front and rear, stash that to the side. We got a 9 16 bolt here. We got a 9 16 bolt underneath. Now, I will pull the bottom bolt out before I pull this one out because we're gonna tip the tank up and I'll try to show you that when we get there because We've got a fuel breather underneath, along with an electrical connection for the speedometer and our fuel release. So, once I get all that disconnected, then I'll pull the front bolt and lift the tank away, set it aside, and we'll start tackling the bars. So with any luck, delivery will be here soon, but I'm gonna get cracking on these bars and this was that 9 16 5 8 I don't remember anymore. Allen head that we were looking at. Let's go find out. I'll tell you, I already forgot. 5 16 That was close. So it's a fraction. So anyway, I'm going to get to uh, stripping some things off here. We'll check back in. Hopefully, the bars will arrive so we can give you a visual. Not like that. Hold on. Okay, so we made progress. Got the tank up. Did end up having to pull a bolt out here that I didn't realize I was gonna have to pull. That ended up being just a tiny little Allen of 530 seconds. So got that pulled out, propped it up, uh, which is something I had laying around my garage. Now, underneath, how to release that, real simple. You just pull straight up on it and then this drops straight down, hence the rag, because you do get a little bit of fuel loss. We have a breather here that was attached to 
this rubber hose. Be careful when you try to disconnect that it's in there pretty snug. And I may or may not have let my hand slip and kind of broke the plastic clip that holds this electrical connection up, but it's not gonna hurt anything. I was still able to get it back on. Now, if this is coming through, we have another connection right here. So I just gotta find the tab, pull that out. And that's our electrical connection here for our, well, probably our speedometer and our fuel pump and or a few other things maybe. Don't quote me on that. I just know it's an electrical connection that's gotta be disconnected. So I'm gonna get that pulled out and then I'll be clear to pull the front bolt, get the tank set aside. Be right back. All right, so something else just learned. The dash has to come off because there's an electrical connection underneath. To remove that, we uh, pull the bolt here, which was nothing more than a 3 16 Allen. You spread the clamp legs here, <laughs> spread the legs, and then this just drops right out. And then we find a safe space for our dash so it doesn't get damaged. Now I think I'm finally ready to actually take this tank off because it was held on better than I thought. So be back again. So bars are off. So just loosened up the, uh, the clamp here and fed the wires up through the hole. Did have to take my mirrors off only because I needed to leave the mirror or the blinkers behind and they were, you know, kind of attached to the levers. But you can see everything's all wrapped up nice and tight. This one probably doesn't need to be, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because shit happens. And I really don't want it to happen again if I can avoid it, because I learned a lot from the first one. So now I'm kind of at a standstill until the delivery shows up. Uh, but tonight is pretty much just going to be get the new bars on, get them mocked up. Because uh, I got more stuff coming in tomorrow, which is going to be Tuesday. More stuff coming in Wednesday. Uh, so in theory, potentially, if it all goes well, bike will be rideable again by Friday. So you're going to see a couple of different outfit changes but that's because I'm doing this over the span of about three days instead of three hours. Uh, so we'll see how it goes and we'll check back once the bars are at least mocked up. Uh, better than that, uh, sit tight, we'll keep rolling. Okay, so day two. Ran into a little bit of a snag last night and turns out the bars won't fit at the moment because the risers are wider than the bar will allow so what we got going on is these risers here are just really wide if you look at it for the bolt hole to the edge so i've got about five and three eighths five and five eighths total uh out to out distance on there on the bars i've only got about five and a quarter to play with so i went ahead and ordered a new set of risers only about an inch and a half rise still for an inch and a quarter bar uh, we'll see if that works that won't be in until next week so a bit of a standstill so in the meantime while i'm waiting on the riser i'm going to go ahead and pull the tgs out of the old bars kind of get the old bars stripped down and start running wires into the new ones just so that way i'm still making progress and it kind of keeps me from getting too impatient but you can see there they are, the 16 inch by inch and a half diameter Dominator Industry meat hooks. They are gonna look great on there once I can get them on there. So, so I'm going to pull the grip off, get to that throttle grip sensor, pull that out. That should be the only wire I need to pull. Not too worried about the clamp. Well, I need to pull the clamshells because I need to get the switches. Because uh, we're going cl chrome clamshells, chrome switches, got new grips coming. So we'll check back once I've got the TGS pulled through again. Uh, but we're going to take it out, cut the sheathing off. Dominator sends you some new heat shrink. So we'll heat shrink the wire and we'll use lots of the silicone spray that I've got 
feed that through, hopefully be done in a very short amount of time. We'll see how it works. I'll let you know when I come back. Hold on. Okay, so that was actually a hell of a lot easier than it was on my buddy's bike. Note to self, Dominator makes good stuff. I'm a big fan of them. Uh, my buddy got the 16 inch, same bars, uh, but an inch and a quarter on his 17 Heritage. And that took us probably six hours before we quit and said screw it and gave it to a shop. They spent two hours and finished it. TGS is in. Here's the extension. There it is. You know, spinning free. That took, no joke, three minutes tops. And that's probably exaggerating to pull that TGS through after I got the heat shrink on, got it lubed up, tied off, and pull. I mean, it's, it was that easy. I, I am flabbergasted, word of the day. Uh, so now I think, since I still got some time, I'm going to work on stripping blinkers. And you can see over here that we got little heat shrink solder tubes. I got to peel back some of this heat shrink here. I have to clip my wires, strip back a little bit of the sheathing, so, and use my heat gun to re-solder the connections because, of course, soft tails aren't as easy, apparently, as touring bikes because the touring bikes are all plug and play with the wires. So I think I'm going to get to trucking along on that. That's where our T25 uh, came in handy was to loosen up those clamshells. Um, and make sure you give yourself ample room. I'm going to say four to six inches if you can, you know, four to six inches uh, of wire off those clamshells so that we got plenty of room to work and just kind of slide them back down into the bars when you're done. So we'll give it a whirl and see if I can't not screw this up. All right, so it's been probably an hour, hour and a half, something like that, but <clears throat> we got turning indicators, we got switches, we got switch, indicator, we got a TGS that functions, we got all of our extensions with plenty of wiring. Got an extra cable in here that I think, since this is these bars technically are for a fat boy or several other different uh, soft tails, I might not need that, but I'm not gonna pull it out just yet till I am damn sure. So I am pretty well about as far as I can go, shy of getting a buddy over to hold the bars while I plug everything in to make sure I at least got my indicators, you know, wired up correctly. I mean, I should. It was pretty straightforward. Everything's color coded. All of your wires are red, black, white, striped. You know, it's it's pretty idiot proof. They do a good job. And those uh, heat gun soldering tubes are fantastic. Once you know what you're doing, because one side's a little bit bigger than the other side, so that we can slide it up the single twist your wires and double it over and then take the wider end, slide it back down over there and then hit it with a gun. But uh, it was real slick. Uh, and once I figured it out, it took me about four of them. But uh, all in all, I mean, they're coming right along. I'm really looking forward. This is gonna be, it's gonna be freaking badass. It's gonna be way better than those stalkers that I still can't get the Kiriakin grip off of because somebody used like Gorilla Glue or something, I don't know. But, uh, now, so far, I'm into just today, you know, pulling the TGS, doing the wiring. Uh, so I'm probably into like two hours, two, two hours ish. One beer, uh, you know, spent probably about an hour last night tearing the bike down, getting ready for all this. So, you know, but we're pretty well tied with the street glide so far, but there's still more work to be done, you know. Uh, I got a, a clutch cable to do. I got a hydraulic line to do. Uh, but I don't have either of those, except, I mean, I guess I do have the clutch cable. I could do that if I were so inclined, which I'm not. That's maybe be a tomorrow project. I don't know. We're going to have some more goodies showing up. So uh, next time you see me, I might have a different shirt on. Who knows? But uh, it'll be another day. So we'll see you. Okay, so... I think we're probably about that halfway point. Uh, at this point, the video is shaping up to be really long, and I really don't want to drop an hour-long video. 
So I'm going to break this up into at least two parts and we'll do a part one and I'll show you where we're at. I don't know where that's going to be yet, but, and then I'll drop a part two, probably a couple of days later, uh, instead of making everybody wait a week, but, uh, ended up with quite the spread of tools now that we're done, but, uh, you know, <sighs> it was a lot of work. I can see why the shops charge the, the labor rate they do and quote as much time as they do. I'm glad that I was stubborn enough and cheap enough to try to figure it out on my own. So if I can do it and I really don't know jack about mechanics, you can do it too. So if you got any questions, comments, concerns with where we're at so far, drop them down below. Uh, in the meantime, if you would, you know, hit that like, do the thing, you know, ring the bell if you want. But uh, we're going to keep trucking along and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.